conversation and question in front of our committee, but good luck to this mm -hmm. month and we'll, we'll be here again. And then if there's time for questions from the audience, we'll do that. And then we will sing all of the acts. And the committee will sh shall remain. Shouldn't be long to do that. And <laughs> talk about um, Alessandra and, and the Commission for Commission Culture. We will then welcome her back in by herself and then welcome all the party up there. presented as part of my honors college requirements to graduate. I'd like to begin by showing you this graphic of the conductor of the top 20 ranked orchestras in the United States. As you can see, this ranks the names of people in one way. This is representative of the whole. In the, in the United States, 20% of conductors are female and 80%
questions from the Eager Student Mail, please do so. A key change for June 2nd is whether attractive or not, or just who wished to do the job. We know Mr. Gard used to move to a bigger campus. He is the headmaster of the Church History of Water, one of the finer complexes of the schools in the spring. We're impressed with his lessons, such as clawed baby teeth and the use of a belt for study. A woman wishing to attend the Church History of Water may get declined due to her gender, as Mr. Gard intends her not and the conclusion of her mentorship with Science Center, she had already conducted at the Science Center Space Band Festival in Germany, the New York City Ballet, and drawn with the Swank Beauty at the festival. These connections may have opened the door for her to have these opportunities. This can be shown in scientific literature, where a study in 2008 showed that hospitals with employee referral programs tend to hire more and more nurses and more likely not. This is because female nurses are more numerous in this field. Predominantly female and male nurse friends and are able to express personality traits where a typical resume would not allow that opportunity. When female nurses predominate their female male nurse friends and those in turn predominate their male and female nurse friends, there ends up being more male nurses in a hospital where these referral programs exist. This can be seen in Burn Friends Referral in New Boston. Because Burn Friend referred all she was able to establish herself in the connection way. These types of referrals and network connections are important in any career, including conducting, to help you study your career further. <coughs> the second woman I'd like to discuss is Alana De La Paz. She currently conducts the King Film Symphony Orchestra, one of Australia's largest orchestras. She has guest conducted countless orchestras in Europe, the US, Venezuela, Brazil, Mexico, Canada, Uruguay, and Asia. She was the first Mexican woman to connect to conduct in New York City and has founded the Philharmonic Orchestra of the Americas, an orchestra dedicated to performing historic Latin American music. Connected connectors of color, such as Alana de la Parra, are unfortunately a rarity. There is, of course, Dr. Ryan Jackson, my main mentor and the connector to the Ninth Symphony Theater, Miguel Hartzogoya for Fort Worth. Roderick Cox, recently appointed to the Minnesota Orchestra, and a few others, but unfortunately few. The way to establish a conducting career is to first become a musician. For musicians of color, number only 4.2% of orchestras nationwide. 
when the audience members, none of the musicians of color want to listen to conductors. So when we're saying musicians are too small, that stands as to why there are so few conductors of color. We generalize this theory to then naturally to include the number of musicians of color. But why are there so few musicians of color? Well, there are two main reasons. The first reason is low income. People with low income can be of any group, but they are more likely to be of personal color than of white origin. When a student instrument can cost you $200 on the low end, and a professional model costs at least $6,000, families with limited income simply cannot afford that purchase, whether it's a used instrument or a new one. This, by the way, does not count lessons or pairs, music festivals, mouthpieces, wreaths, strings, all of which cost money. Even a rented instrument from a school program can cost at least a dollar, which for families on a tight budget is just not as expensive as in school. When, when children are unable to play an instrument, they are unable to even begin a career in classical music. When those with limited income tend to be people of color, they are disproportionately affected by this income condition. The second reason as to why there are so few people of color is a lack of culture people of color feel towards classical music. When conductors and rhythmists and their family members and these audience members, musicians, and composers all tend to be white, both white people and people of color feel as though classical music is a cultural output of white people. Kelly Hall Thompson, for example, a black violin soloist, has remarked in interviews that even well-meaning people have told her to play less firmly. People view the classically trained violinist as taking part in someone else's culture. Because of this view that people of color are outside of the norm when it comes to classical music, they never go to concerts, so they never do most of it. They never feel the need to pick up an instrument and learn how to work it. They never become career musicians, so they never become a lack of money, and an inability to identify with classical music culture, deter people of color away from classical music. When all conductors begin as professional musicians, and so few people of color pursue classical music as a career, it is not surprising why Juan de Villa Para is nearly alone at the top of the Mexican American women conductors. Attention to disparate issues by including more diversity, and making people of color feel as though classical music isn't part of their culture, is a complex issue that puts more and more grit into the case but will also be touched upon in the conclusion of this talk. The third woman I'd like to discuss is Diane Wilson. She has been the music director of a number of symphonies, including the Noah Symphony, Symphony Southeast Texas, and the Greater Miami Blues Symphony. Diane later is today the music director of the Allen Brothers Symphony, and is also a composer. She named her first four pianists from 2008 the Jay Allen Brothers Symphony, and her other works were Susan Kennedy and Musical performed over 300 times a year. <clears throat> However, the bill talks bill. Although the Dutch Encyclopedia of Women Composers is over 6,000, only these four performed on a regular basis, and only Clara Schumann and Fanny Mendelssohn are mentioned, if at all, and these just as late. Why are there so few women composers in our world today? Well, there are two reasons. The first is that women were largely denied compositional education for most of music history. Until, and even throughout the modern era, era of classical music, women were encouraged to play piano only exclusively. The skill of a piano could be used by making less than 10 notes and eventually become a deciding factor in the result's ability. Compositional male pianists were actively discouraged, as Igor Guillaume teaches, to be the woman who had only known a minor. <laughs> God forbid, a minor is a media not her first and foremost. Women were then instructed until the 20th century music, not play. This can be seen in the lives of the composers I just mentioned. Fanny Mendelssohn's father actively discouraged her from pursuing classical music, instead telling her to focus on being an opera. Fanny Dietrich's husband also prohibited her from composing, and it was only after he died that she was able to come into the fold, or she was able to come into help in the fold. Because of these attitudes regarding women composers throughout history, they were unable to be educated, and therefore get murdered for their time. The second reason as to why there are so few women composers 
can you see more direct disease cases? But male historian Fred Ishby thinks in a rate growth that don't agree with their views and don't look like that. And that can change things. Even when a man, even when a woman composer was able to make a name for herself as a composer, after she died, men could erase her from their records. This could be true for the likes of Claude Sheen, who was well educated and a composer in her own right. But after her death, was largely erased and ignored and put in rooms and closets. These could indeed be called a lack of education and erasure, but few women composers are overwhelmed by men in their work. Had women received the same education as now, there would be more women composers. And had, m had men not erased women from their repertoire, more would be women in history. The last composer, the last conductor I would like to look at is Roy Jackson. If Roy Laura Jackson's current position as music director and composer was no for a woman, she was assistant director for the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra under Robert Spencer until 2007. She's also been the music director of the Master Chamber Orchestra, the Life Sciences Orchestra, and was the Trinity Oswald Conducting Fellow in Boston Symphony Orchestra for many years. Jackson received her doctoral degree from the University of Michigan and her connect in the violin degree from Trinity Women University. I chose Roy Jackson as on a more personal reason than I've chosen a few other composers. Obviously, as an honors student, I have high expectations, but I can feel a little overwhelmed looking at the lives of men I've met and knowing they have come, both of whom were singled out as rising stars early in their careers. Roy Jackson, on the other hand, is a more personal reason. With the help of my mentor, Dr. Rodney Dixon, I was able to sit here and interview with her and get a behind the scenes insight on conducting and composing. I will now share some of the highlights of this interview with her. Jackson did first her training courses in Italy, such as, for example, when she applied for a conducting position and the music director called her back saying that this orchestra didn't need women, so she was not hired. Another music director from the orchestra told her that they already had the women there, so they didn't need them. Rather than let those opinions influence her, however, Jackson persevered to achieve her degree. Her main mentor was Robert Spencer, who, as she told me, never brought up any kind of discrimination and instead balanced her degree with others. Through her other mentor, Mimi Zavala, she received opportunities to conduct youth and children's work, which put her on the map and helped her establish her conducting career. One of her most memorable pieces of the interview was when she told me most people actually don't think like that to reach music anymore. In Texas now, just before the mentor I started my thesis at Trinity Women in Music, she's used a non-classical and female audience, such as myself, to believe that everyone in the field thinks that two girls can sing. To hear from a woman who has been there and done that, to tell me that these notes, although still prevalent, are in the minority, fills me with the hope that I'll be good at my skill and not be hindered when I audition as Trinity Girls in the next couple of years. Although one day in the future, that will be the case, that's not the case yet. As stated at the very start of my thesis, women conductors number only 20% of the industry of composers. So what can be done to make less changes? Well, those who need it to take account of creative opportunity will be colorful on their own. Male knockouts decide to create a conducting factory. Help attractive composers conducting classes just by offering to open the door to many aspiring women conductors. Those in the program take lessons from their repertoire and guest conduct an orchestra for six weeks, getting a first-hand experience of the career. Women composers have opportunities available to them, such as the Women's Composers Festival in Hartford, Connecticut, where women composers can submit their pieces for performance and recognition. Men and women of color have opportunities available to them, such as the Space Center Awards. This is an organization that can give Fulbright scholarships, grants, and veterans to aspiring musicians of color to get them opportunities in their career. They also offer arts and music internships and scholarships to help low-income people afford professional interns. These are just a few resources available to minorities and women who have been historically oppressed in classical music. Obviously, there are fewer women than men conductors, but will this always be the case? With the knowledge and the research in my thesis, I optimistically say that by the time I retire, I expect the numbers to be much closer to 50%. with scholarships and more women conducting than I've been ever, I believe that more and more women will be encouraged to take up the baton and sex is used to target women in my thesis who are still in career path. I leave you with this quote from Laura Jackson, a quote that has stuck by me throughout my research, and I believe, and I believe predicts the future of 
can be discriminatory in some cases. So now what can I do? This has been a handful of interesting ideas for a long range of reasons, but now I feel this is an option that I've never heard of before. This is the showing of exposure and social change. I don't know half the women connected in the movie. There are so many women connected, men and also passing through PMP can't just be told about. Emily Bingo is either a militant and she's taking the world by storm. I've actually had a dream that only women candidates are needed there. I'm a novel to make, so if I need you, I'll speak, but this probably won't happen in my life. Thank you so much. It was so nice to be part of this. I really did get stuck on this. It didn't even occur to me.
For example, um, when I talk about uh, race discrimination, I talk about the most simple kind of thing, but this is about the heaviest of things in here going on. Um, so when I talk about like officers being discriminated to physically because they're heavy, I think that also applies to race and harassment. Um, women have been denied uh, job opportunities just due to their weight. Um, so I just kind of wanted to bring this out and also just as a picture of our kids.
that um, her position was Leon Meisey was the one who was assistant principal for a long time, and she had in the I think in the seventies, maybe eighties, and she had won that audition many times with Jane Jones out, which is kind of a job because she was he didn't want any female principals in the Boston Symphony. My question for you, Sandra, was: Is there gender discrimination in auditions still? Good question. <laughs> I mean. I would say now. But it's much better than it was before. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's any better. And obviously that's different for conductors, and yeah. because they are not blind um, auditions. But and you know, of course, yeah. Sometimes in the final round, the finals do uh, the screen does come down. But um, I've definitely lost an audition to a woman in the final round, and <laughs> it was yeah, just the two of us. <laughs> so. So it's, it's it's a lot better. Now. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, how does 
aesthetics I think figure it's a, into this thinking? It's, I think it's a blend from people who are kind of writing to people um, with the, uh, the community that audience that Alan Pike writes in terms of just like, what are you thinking about? Mm -hmm. Things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, but, but uh, when he was saying about how the method of communication in this book is very much a friend to family night and somehow the Latin American music and the Puerto Rican Celtic stuff. And then when you get to, when they arrive there, um, there it takes place in Mach G, which is much higher than any classical mm -hmm. music I've ever heard. And it's the Mundi Latino Corte Latino, and all of this rock and roll and tango <laughs> and all this stuff. Um, so it's for them, it's it takes them out of their culture, and then they never want to come back. Um, so I think that that can be debilitating in some way. Um, but I think, uh, I mean, so that that's. That's my thoughts on that in terms of its publication and the places where it's mm -hmm. going to be seen and heard. Mm -hmm. um, it does suggest solidarity instead of solitude. <coughs> which you always throw up in the air, you just kind of like have to assume. So they put poet reference and uh, they would do singing. And when that when he first was discovering in his 2014 or so, he was like the author. And people were so angry because people were saying, why don't you come and perform just because he was doing this cool stuff. Um, so when it's so conservative, it leads into like traditional old fashioned things that also lead to people going to this extreme violence and violence. So there really is this fascinating contrast to be found between notions of the purity of music as opposed to something that ostensibly could be affected by this variety, and yet at the same time, the purity of the music does provoke the attention, the idea of pure sound. So you, you, you bump up against not just the genesis allows that along with the source of some of the stuff that was kept hidden is sustained with you know experience mm -hmm. of sound. And the things that you just might need would be a combination of numbers. I kept looking to see mm -hmm. numbers yeah. of musicians, um, conservatories, how the system is bringing people to production or bringing them. And think of those strings. Is it just do conductors start with an instrument and then move to the other instruments? Mm -hmm. um, but I was going to say uh, I did contact Felipe Mendes and I said, can I ask him how, how to paint this book? And mm -hmm. um, But they wouldn't give me an algorithm of ways to do it to personalize my treatment for my paintings. So if I had more resources and more time, I would have to really analyze every single thing I would say to get to the truth of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Questions or comments? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any others? Um, I guess I'm curious, this is kind of like exactly what you were saying about systemic issues, um, because to me, like some of the frustration I have with like what I do musician is that it's so elitist classical music in a way is so elitist and so like sometimes even the discussions of like sexism and discrimination seem like um like almost like they kind of are the tip of the iceberg in terms of like the people that have the means to break through the glass ceilings are often people that come from just like extremely socioeconomic privilege mm -hmm. um and so like I, if i've been thinking personally like my my own kind of like life about just kind of like as a musician, what I want to, how I want to engage in a community to sort of like make things more accessible, and like, so I guess I'm curious as to like what you think, um, as an orchestra or a conductor or any kind of spokesperson for this activity, what role should we have in the overall community, um, and do you think that 
this is something that can, like, in terms of more women conductors being in the field or whatever, like, do you think that that's something that can happen kind of passively? Like, it's going to happen, or do you think that this requires, like, um, orchestras to completely change the way they view community and, like, their place in history? Um, I'm not sure what the first part of Sorry, you're <laughs> start on simple things, which is um, Aaron Alcock also does poetry with the Baltimore, Sym with the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra. Um, his Baltimore is a uh, real poverty and hard uh, museum right now. Um, and so they have them start out on percussion, and they try and teach them that percussion can be anything, ever. Like, they just kind of buy it, and that's the concept of it. So it teaches kids that you can be fun, but also that they don't need to buy it or put it on anything that they do. They can have a percussion or not. Play with whatever they want. Um, so I think that I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Well, it's very fantastic that you all three are here today. Yeah. We'll now after another big round of applause <laughs> for Yeah, it's, it's a lot of different configurations. 